Electricast. There's a change happening in the way we live, the way we work, the way we spend our money and make our decisions. We are evolving to be more conscious in our actions in a way that serves the world and makes it a better place. Welcome to The Ethical Evolution. The Ethical Evolution podcast is brought to you by Ethical Change Agency. I'm Bindi, I'm the founder, and my mission is to help ethical entrepreneurs and holistic healers to find their voice through spiritual coaching and podcasting. I'm honoured to bring you the stories of those who create change through healing, kindness, innovation, purpose, and spirit. Understanding that to create collective change, we need to be the change. It all begins with us. After suffering from multiple health issues, including rectal bleeding, two separate skin issues, chronic acid indigestion, and surgery to remove one of his organs due to serious digestive issues, Tim James knew something had to change. But it was only after watching his closest ones die of cancer and the untimely death of his younger brother that he finally decided to take action. Tim's journey led him to a shocking discovery which helped another one of his friends beat cancer and transform every area of his life. Feeling charged with a duty to help others, he started sharing his knowledge with anyone that would listen. This led him to producing his own chemical-free food products. Chemical Free Body was born. Getting back to basics is the best thing we can do to eliminate the majority of chemicals in our body. And so this episode may be the wake-up call you need to make the change. It all starts with you. Welcome, Tim, to The Ethical Evolution. Well, I am very happy to be here. You're in Australia and I'm over in Oregon and we're able to do this. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, Tim, for those people who don't know you and what you do, can you go ahead and tell us? Sure. Well, um, my backstory, I grew up on a farm in eastern Oregon. I hunted and fished a lot. I had a big garden. And um, let's, I played baseball at a high level for 30 years. And then I fast forward. I'm 37 years old. I moved down to the big city, Portland, Oregon, and uh, became a financial advisor of one of my many jobs and had kids and wife and, you know, a mortgage and kind of a stressed out career, three different offices we were managing. And I was getting ready to take over, um, uh, who become a friend of mine, my mentor, Jeff uh, Dixon. He had a great practice, 18 employees and all my friends were like, dude, you've made it. You're going to be taking over Jeff's business because it was already a multi-million dollar business. I was all stoked about the money and all that. And then, um, but I was, the problem was, is I was 42 pounds overweight. Um, I had started developing eczema on my knee. It was cracking and bleeding. And then I had eczema on both of my elbows, cracking and bleeding and basically sticking to my pants and my shirts. And then my, I couldn't wear white shirts anymore as a financial advisor because I stain them. So I had to wear dark shirts, either dark blue or, or black. And then, um, it got worse, and I started having acid reflux. I was eating Tums and Rolaids 24-7. Uh, doctors wanted me to go on to Prilosac, but I just like, eh, it sounded like a porn object or something, so I just wanted to stay away from that. I was given medications, uh, prescriptions, but I never, never took them. Actually, it got worse, too, because then I started bleeding rectally for like two and a half years. And then one of the, I remember one of the prescription side effects was rectal bleeding. So I'm like, mm. what do I do? You know, so I just never took it. I'm, I'm glad I didn't. Um but, uh, and then to tap, you know, to top it all off, then finally I'm on a vacation in Peru with my wife. We're at a place called Tumbes, which is south of Ecuador, very northern Peru. She's from Lima originally. And her dad went with us. Her dad was a medical doctor. He ran a big clinic, one of the largest clinics in Lima. There's like a lot of people. It's like 18, 20 million people down there. And um, all of a sudden we're out deep sea fishing on this, you know, this exotic vacation. We planned out thousands of dollars and all this time. And I wasn't feeling good. And the ship captain and her dad's like, oh, you have motion sickness. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I've hunted and fished my whole life. I've been out in the boats uh, every time we go to Hawaii. I've been in some rough water, Oregon coast a lot. I don't get motion sickness. I've seen other people get it, but it's not me. They're like, ah, oh, he's got motion sickness. Well, I got back and it didn't get better. I started getting worse. And then finally he, like, hey, what's going on with you? And I'm like, uh. And so he's like, oh, my God, we have to get you to the hospital. So he diagnosed me. And... 
we basically, uh, I'm bent over at a 90 degree angle. I can't even walk erect. I'm in tremendous pain. We get all our stuff. We have to pack all everything. We, and we go down to the, the airport. We miss the plane flight like 20 minutes. There's only one plane flight a day out of this place or every 12 hours. So, um, he's like, we can't wait. You could die. So we rent a, a van and we drive down this super bumpy road down the coastline of Peru to a town called Piora. Went to a hospital there. I got diagnosed like five times. Very painful as they're pushing on my gut. They're all speaking Spanish 100 miles an hour. And the crazy thing was this hospital was super third world. It was like the examination table had a light above it, obviously, but full of bugs flying around. Mm. And I'm looking over at the instruments. And they look like they're pretty old, like from the 50s, you know. I'm thinking, this ain't good. And um, so he didn't want him to operate on me there because he had all the state-of-the-art facilities. So he's like on the phone scheduling the OR. And I was basically life flighted back to Lima on a commercial airline that nobody knew about. So he calls the airline. We get the next flight out. We get in a taxi. He has them dope me up with all this medication. Because remember, I'm bent over at a 90 degree angle. Mm. They doped me up. I was walking. I was kind of loopy. And he was sitting next to me looking at me the whole time, making sure I was okay. So I'm basically being life flighted on a regular commercial airline. Not supposed to do that. And then um, and we get there. And I went basically right into surgery. And so I spent the rest of my time you know, recovering there on our vacation. And then. When it was over, my wife had to wheelchair me back into the States. So number one, I was very thankful for the surgeons that saved my life. This is a part of Western medicine that's awesome. That, and a lot of people don't understand that Western medicine was born in war. So it was developed out of wartime, crisis care. So for crisis management, if you get in a car accident or you get a shrapnel wound or like a war, if you get shot, your elbow gets blown off, um, they can save your life and they fix you. And they do a darn good job of it. And that is a very necessary part of the medical system and we need it. We absolutely need it, and those people are heroes. But when it comes to chronic issues like I had with my gut issues and the eczema on my skin and all this other stuff, it's an F. They failed. You know? mm. And it's really simple. All you got to do is look at the uh, life expectancy charts. The United States has been dropping like a rock since 2014, but not even keeping up at all with the other industrialized nations since about 1984. So it's been a long time coming. So what that means is, is that our children and grandchildren are now dying younger than us. And so why would we go into that? So, but, you know, it gets deeper. I found out the food system's broken, the medical system's broken, and palliative care. Um, the farming system's broken, which I was a farmer. The farmers are killing the soil, and they, they don't even know any better. They're good, decent people. I work with them a lot of them. I know them. Um, but the systems have, have, have failed us. So um, so the one thing that I learned was, another thing was, um, um, my poor health doesn't just affect me. It affects everybody else around mm. me. Because when I had all these health issues, I ruined the vacation for not only me, but my wife. I'm sure she didn't like dealing with all this crap. And then her, and her dad, that was his first vacation in over 30 years of being a medical Wow. Because he, <laughs> he worked, he had this big practice and he worked hard to build it. And then he went and started running this hospital and still a lot of the patients wouldn't let him fire him. So they just, he just helped everybody. He never stopped working. So what does he end up doing? He's back in the hospital taking care of me. Um, and then fast forward, um, you know, I come back home and my health's still a mess. I tried like high protein diet, low protein, high fat, low fat, high carb. I tried all this stuff, six meals a day, five meals a day. Um, you know, uh, I just didn't have any energy anymore. Mm. Um, I couldn't even run around a track. I was, I'm talking a high level athlete. Just even back when we were like 15, our, our team, our little podunk town here in Eastern Oregon, we took fifth in the world in Babe Ruth. We had some really good athletes. I was always around really good athletes and I love performing at a high level. I couldn't even run around a track once without huffing and puffing. I was just out of shape. And so I wanted to change, but I didn't know what to do. And I, I kept getting, I tried stuff, but it didn't work. And then a friend of mine on my baseball team, Clay Mahoy, got diagnosed with cancer. We thought from chewing tobacco and he died, but I watched him go through that and it was horrible. The chemo and the surgeries and then throwing up all the time. And, you know, his last baseball game, he's spitting up blood in the middle, in between innings. And we're just like, whoa. Um, and, but he, you know, he told us he was wanting to go. You know, my buddy Jason's like, Clay, what are you doing out here? And he's like, dude, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out doing what I love. Mm. So, you know, what do you say to that? It's like, play ball, you know. So I went through that. My aunt had died of uh, uh, melanoma skin cancer that spread to her lungs. My mom took care of her. And for anybody that's had to take care of somebody in a hospital situation, my mm. God, my heart goes out to you because that is a, that's a tough job. It's also probably one of the, I could be one of the most rewarding jobs ever. I actually had a death doula on my show um, and, She'd been with over 80 people through death. And she says, you can't 
really truly live until you face death. A lot mm. of us run away from it like we're never going to have it. It's like we're, you know, heads buried in the sand like an ostrich. Let's say ego taking over. And um, and so um, and then after that, my friend Charles, uh, oh, actually, my grandma died of brain cancer. Right. So I had a lot of experience mm. in this cancer thing. And then my friend uh, Charles at age 43, he gets cancer. And he's like, hey, I'm going to go to this place in Florida called Hippocrates Wellness Center. Will you go with me? They have like a detox nutrition thing. And all I heard was my friend's got cancer. He wants my help. I'm like, I'm in. So January 1st, 2011, we flew there. And uh, I wasn't really prepared for what was going on because he's like, by the, way, by the way, when we get there, there's no meat. There's no dairy. There's no salt. There's no sugar. <laughs> there's nothing cooked over 115 degrees. There's no vinegar. I'm like, wait a minute. You have to get like no meat, dude. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm freaking out because I thought you had to have that for strong muscles and to live. And I was like, I was programmed. But um, I'm like, well, they've been in business 61 years. Your buddy's got cancer. Focus on him. And this, isn't, this isn't about you. Mm. And so I did. And day one, uh, my acid reflux was gone. So the Tums and Rolades have been taken for years. I didn't need them anymore. Mm. Um, I started going through kind of a, uh, what they call it, a Hertz reaction or some detox symptoms. Because I, you know, I was eating terrible standard American processed food. And, um, and then I went to this class called Internal Awareness. And this doctor comes out, Dr. Scott Josephson. He's very fit. And um, he turned 50 in that day. And I was like, dude, that guy's 50. He looked maybe 40. It was like blew me away. And then it was kind of weird. Like the people that had been working there 10 or longer years, they looked like 10, 15 years younger than people, their general population, mm-hmm. their age. I mean, this one nurse is like 53. And I thought she was like 33. She was gorgeous. And I'm like, you're 53. And she's like, I, my mind's like getting twisted, right? So all my belief systems, that place started crumbling. Because I was like, how could this podunk place help my buddy with cancer? I mean, they were spending billions of dollars on the cure and all this stuff. And, you know, and we have our best minds at it. That's my belief was. Um, and so this doctor comes out and he said, look, the average person has 6 to 12 pounds of impacted fecal material in your colon. Period. All of you. He goes, we've had over 600,000 people through the door. And he was trying to push us to get colon hydrotherapy. You heard of that? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't. I didn't know what it was. So. For the listeners, if you don't know what colon hydrotherapy or colonics is, you basically sit on a tube rectally, and water gently goes in and out of your colon for about an hour, and it cleans your colon, and it gets all that crap out of there, literally. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and I'm like, and I remember Elbow and Charles, I'm like, look, dude, I came here to have you with your cancer, but I am not doing that deal. <laughs> this is not happening. So, um, but the doctor was smart, so he showed these four virtual colonoscopies, three of unhealthy people and one of a healthy person that had been on this protocol. And so the first one was like a 24-year-old female with Hashimoto's and yeast infection and her, th- like, you know, it's like, and, and uh, it's that thyroid issue. And inside of her colon, you think you go into somebody's colon, you're going to see brown things, right? Well, inside of her colon was all white and yellow. She was completely overgrown with yeast. And I'm like, whoa, that doesn't look good. Well, no wonder she feels like crap. And then the next guy was a 65-year-old male with um, colon cancer and he had parasites. So black like tar it was like mm. black as night inside of him with white worms crawling around i'm just like oh my god then the doctor turns around and he's like oh by the way easily 50 percent of you are going to see these parasites exiting your body over the next three weeks on this protocol you're going to see hookworms pinworms and tapeworms exiting some of your stools will be fuzzy white with all these i'm like what and then he goes but there's also microscopic parasites that live in your cells your tissue and they're all having they're eating your food they're drinking your drinks they're urinating and defecating in you and they're having sex and laying thousands of eggs. And now I'm like, <laughs> I want to get them out, you know. And so I'm like, I maybe this colon hydrotherapy thing's something I want to do. And then they showed like a 45 year old female with breast cancer, and inside of her colon was mostly black, like tar, a little bit of brown stuff. And then they went to the healthy person, and the healthy person had you could see the pink lining of the colon, and there was you know brown waste matter there, like it's supposed to be. That's when it clicked for me. I'm like, holy, this the internal train's different. The healthy person's internal training look completely different than the unhealthy people. And that's when I realized this is an inside job. It's an inside game. And so I signed up for the colon hydrotherapy. They weighed me. I did it the next day. They weighed me again. I dropped 11 pounds wow. of that nasty funk and gunk and junk that came out of me. And the record, this was back in 2011, was one lady. And remember, they've done hundreds of thousands of these for people. The record was one lady had dropped 27 pounds of impacted fecal material in one one-hour session. Oh, get out. And, I, <laughs> and, and I'm sitting there thinking, 27 pounds. I'm like, what weighs 27 pounds? I'm thinking, like a medium-sized dog weighs 27 pounds. Wow. So imagine having a, a medium-sized dog inside of you that's just putrefying, nasty stuff. 
that's low oxygen, high acid, and it just falls out of your butt. That's basically what they did for that lady. And so I got an 11-pound dog out of me, basically, of this <laughs> stuff. And um, that was the average is 6 to 12 pounds. That's what everybody has. So if you're trying to get your health back, what I've learned is 85% of the disease starts in the colon. You have got to get this stuff out. Now, I know there's some people listening right now going, like me, like, I ain't doing that. There's no way I'm going to let them touch my butt or do that. It sounds weird. We have actually have uh, – there's – there's things you can do. We actually developed uh, food products. One of our products is called Gut Detox. People can take it over 15 days. There's no diarrhea, and it gets that stuff out of the colon very gently. And you don't even know you're uh, cleansing, actually, or detox. It's just very mild. So it's an old ancient Ayurvedic formula. Our, our formula, Dr. Treadway, brought back from India. He became a master herbalist over there. And the you know, Ayurvedic tra traditions is like you know, 10,000 years of basically biological engineering system science. They know what works. So we have that formula, and so we offer that for people that aren't going to get colon hydrotherapy, but I still think you need to get colon hydrotherapy in conjunction with it. It's very, very powerful what you can do. Uh, if you're in a remote area, you might have to travel a little bit. Um, I have to travel two and a half hours to get my uh, maintenance doses uh, once or twice a year. So um, we do that, and then uh, a few days into this thing, I'm like, I'm not feeling good, right? So I got night sweats. I'm irritable. I got a metallic taste coming out of my tongue as these heavy metals are exiting my body. Um, but I didn't have it as bad as some people. Some people had actually parasites exiting through their skin. Mm. One lady at the lunch table had a, a parasite crawling out of her eye. And I was just like, uh, you have a parasite crawling out of your eye. And she's like, oh, my God. And I don't get it to your salad, you know. <laughs> and you're trying to get that stuff out. And, um, you know, I, I don't even know if I would have believed this stuff if I wouldn't have been there and saw it. You know what I mean? It's like, holy crap. And I was going through it. So I wasn't feeling that great. And they said on Thursday or Friday, you're going to wake up and you're going to feel like a new person. Well, I was like praying to God that it was going to be Thursday, not Friday. So Wednesday night, I went to bed early, like 8, 830. And I never go to bed that early. I just wanted the day to be over. I didn't feel good. I woke up Thursday morning and I felt like I was literally reborn. Because like, mm -hmm. I've been on this protocol on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So about four or five days. And um, me and Charles did our little routine. We did our lemon lime water. We had a wheatgrass shot. We went and worked out. We did the um, sauna, infrared sauna. And then we did the uh, hot cold plunge, mineral pool. And then we went and got this big, huge green juice. And I'm walking back to the hacienda with him. And I said, dude, do you feel as good as I do? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, I can't. Dude, I feel like I'm 18. I, my arms are literally tingling with energy. Like, I want to go do something. My brain is clear. I had so much brain fog. It was hard for me to focus. It was hard for me to actually pass my tests become a financial advisor, um, which most of it has nothing to do with being a financial advisor, but whatever. And so I, um, you know, and I looked at him, I'm like, dude, you're going to heal a cancer. I, I, I've interviewed all these people trying to find the chinks on the armor in this place. And I just keep running into people that have healed themselves that are back now and they're bringing a friend or they're back to just revisit this place. And I'm like, this, I'm going to go home. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to give up all meat except for bacon. And we're going to go home and do this deal. And we did. We got very serious about our lives. We put our health as a priority. And I started growing sprouts, and I got into all this stuff. And Charles, in two and a half years, healed himself of cancer. Uh, we actually ran the 2012 Portland Marathon before he was cancer-free. He was blowing people away, and he had cancer. Um, and uh, I think we you know, we finished like four hours or something. Um, but we both I, – I, it's a long story. But I, crossing that finish line with him was like – we knew he was going to heal cancer at that point. Six months later, he had healed himself. Um, what happened to me, um, I, uh, I lost the 42 pounds literally in 60 days. Um, my elbows healed up, no more cracking and bleeding. Eight months later, that big patch of eczema was gone. The other skin issue I didn't even mention was gone. My brain fog's gone. And I've been getting healthier every day since then and learning things. And, and Charles was able to see his son graduate high school, go to father-son weekend at Oregon State University. And his son became a realtor and sold him a house. So that's our story. And now I'm just like, I built this whole company around it. And I just try to help people wake up to the fact that you are nature. We have to get these man-made chemicals out of your body, um, reduce your stress, and then flood your body with real nature and nutrition and living foods. And, you know, anything's possible. Tim, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> that's in, that's in, <laughs> that was all in one breath too. That's incredible. <laughs> um, and, and for those people who can't see you right now, I, I'm going to be brave and ask you how old you are right now. Uh, 50. So I'm as old as the same age as that doctor that I met, Dr. Uh, 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 Scott Joseph. So he's, he's a cool dude. All right, Tim. Well, I, I've got to say you're the youngest looking 50-year-old I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? And so it was funny because I remember I'm like, I, I, I was at this class and the doctor said, he said, look, your cells regenerate themselves. 
they're always, re you know, we're getting new skin, new mm. hair. We got to keep cutting our hair, our nails. Obviously, we reach. So when you think about your hair and your nails and your skin growth, you're like, yeah, we do regenerate. New liver every two weeks, you know, all this crazy stuff, right? And so he said, literally, if I took every cell in your body and put it into a catalog, and we come back in seven years, all those cells will be completely new cells. They will not, you will not, you are not the same person. You are physically made up of completely different cells and whatever you ate during the last so ever. And so I, I realized that I'm like, wow, I could be a whole new Tim in seven years. Mm -hmm. Like literally, mm -hmm. like I could regenerate myself. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it because seven years is going to go by. And I'm going to be either sitting here, I wish I would have, I wish I could have, or I'm going to change myself. And I'm going to be like Dr. Scott Joseph. I'm going to be like that nurse. I'm going to be like the, the the directors of this place that looked amazing. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. And um, I don't think I would have ever went to a place like that because my ego and I was all clouded up with societal mm -hmm. conditioning, my belief patterns. I was like, ah, there's no way. But my friend got cancer. So thank God he got cancer because it was the best thing that happened to both of us and mm -hmm. our families. And now... Like literally thousands of people, because I know we've affected and our myself, our company, just our little ripple effect, thousands, thousands and thousands of people. And and it just it just keeps going. So I'm very humbled about this and um, just very excited about like I just keep learning more things of how I can feel better, look younger. And I just want to coach people and share them. And we've built a whole coaching team of nurses and doctors. And I can't even believe what's happened. But I just follow my excitement, and my joy. I have no business plan. It's joy and excitement. I follow it the best I can every day, and I let I let the spiritual alignment just take place. Mm. And it's a case of uh, cancer being a blessing, isn't it? Because, I mean, if you hadn't gone down that path, you could have ended up in the same kind of fate, um, really. I don't. I shudder to think where I would have been. Yeah. I mean, I know there is another time space reality where Tim didn't get this information and decided not to go help his friend, but I'm glad I did. And um, I feel like I, I literally feel like I'm 20. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm trail running. I've been trail running for quite a few years now. Um, I, like I said, I was an athlete. I like moving my body. I started doing rock climbing because my kids want to do it. They're both in their early twenties. Um, that was humbling, even though I thought I was in good shape. <laughs> it's a different type of shape. And it took yeah. me a few months to kind of catch up to him a little bit. Uh, one of them's still way ahead of me. He's like a monkey. He climbs everywhere. <laughs> and then, um, a few months ago, I, a couple months ago, I got into jujitsu which is pretty, you know, yeah, I broke long. my toe. <laughs> I did do that. <laughs> but, you know, I healed up pretty quick. So, Because I have strategies. I know how to heal my body. I know how to uh, reduce inflammation. And um, I've coached over 600 people through this process, and over 300 of them had cancer. So I've learned a lot personally and um, from other people. And just like, to me, it's like when I wake up, life is like a, a blank pal a palette, and I just get to design it, paint it, do whatever I want, and it's, it's, it's just really fun. <laughs> And if we um, just take a step back and talk about the gut, Tim, like it doesn't take that long to heal, does it? Like once you get all the chemicals and all the gunk out and, and actually detox all that out of your system, it is so fast to heal, isn't it? Well, I will say yes and no because the reality is, is it doesn't matter. Let's say you're a really healthy individual. Um, you think you're healthy, but, you know, you have no – no, you're on no medications, mm. you move your body, really no aches and pains, but you're probably eating mostly standard American diet or some of it, but maybe healthier, right? And then you have somebody who like, let's say you're an Olympic level athlete. Let's do that. So you have an Olympic level athlete and you have a stage four cancer situation going on. Those two people, it's going to take the exact same time to build their immune systems up mm. at the top. It's about a two to three year process, depending on your genetics, depending on your environmental, uh, what, what's around your environment. And this this is not just your air and your water and your mm. food, your clothing and that stuff, but the people in your life. Yep. Right? The Wi Fi's, the smart meters, the 5G's. If I got somebody living next to 5G versus somebody who's out in the country with no G, that person has a much more conducive environment to heal than the person next to these weird frequencies that are not from nature. Right? So there's a lot of different things to go into this, to this place, but. People can start getting better very quickly. So what we do is I, I, you know, I use common sense and I'm like, well, if the tractor or the car is not running right and the engine's flashing red, um, I don't just keep driving it mm. because I know intellectually that if I keep driving it, it's going to leave me stranded and really put me in a pinch. Or it, then when I finally do take it into the shop, I'm going to have a much larger repair bill because I didn't take care of it up front. It's kind of like doing brakes. If your brakes get low, you're like, you should change the brake pads. 
But if you don't do it, and it gets into the calipers, now you got to replace the calipers and the brake pads, and maybe even the rotors. And now you got a really expensive job. But this is what's happening with our health. So we have these check body lights, I call them flashing. Like maybe you're overweight like I was, or you had low energy like I was, or you had mental fog like I did, or skin issues, or maybe you have cancer, or whatever, fibromyalgia, colitis, Crohn's, diverticulitis, diverticulitis, MS, Parkinson's. I mean, all these, you know, things, all these catch basin terms for all this stuff. The bottom line is, is your body is screaming at you. You need to change your environment. Mm -hmm. The people you hang out with, the air, the water, the food, all the stuff I talked about. And it's that simple. So if, if you have these check body lights going on in a car, or in a car, you don't just like, oh, I'm going to put, you know, 91% octane instead of 87. Okay, well, that might run a little bit better, but you need to take the engine and you need to flush the engine if it's all gummed up. That would be your colon is gummed up. Mm-hmm. We know everybody's colon is gummed up. We know your small intestine actually has this black, brown, viscous mucoid plaque in there, which is a protective mechanism. It's trying to stop all this crap from going into your bloodstream through the, those little villi, those hair-like structures to get into your bloodstream. So it's a protective. you got to get that crap out of there. you got to open up your lymphatic channels, your garbage removal system. You do that by water and movement and oxygen. And there's just these basic things. you got to get the pathways moving, the cells, and the, and you got to make sure that your spine is in alignment. You don't have misalignments. You know, I learned this a long time ago. Bindi, it's like, I can work really hard with somebody and help them get their gut cleaned up, and then we start recolonizing with good bacteria and all this stuff in different ways. And then if they have a misalignment in their spine, and that nerve signal is reduced by 20, 30, 40, 50%, Wow, I need to pay attention to that. Mm-hmm. This is why good chiropractic care, and that's why I got into yin yoga, long term, like long, it's a uh, stretching, three to 10 minute stretching postures. And learning, if you have a tight spot, like that's pulling some uh, thing out of alignment, like your, your, your spine out of alignment, you go to a chiropractor, they adjust you. Guess what? You feel amazing. But that tight muscle bloop, pulls it right back out again. Mm-hmm. So, in conjunction with chiropractic care, you want to learn what those muscles and tendons and fascia are that are tight, and you can learn to open them up. There's a um, – I don't know if you've ever done, like, um, eagle pose in yoga. It's where you cross your arms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I do one called uh, nested eagle where I, 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 I put my toes down. I'm on my toes around the thing with my knees, and then I do a, a eagle pose, and I curl forward, and it opens up the back and the neck muscles. For people that are driving a lot or working in office, they have tight upper back. Mm. I, I can't tell you how many people are like, after three to five minutes on doing both sides, like, oh my God, my pain's gone. Like my pain's gone. And it's not just a once and done. You got to, it's part of our lifestyle. You got to keep doing this. Like a, a cat doesn't wake up in one time in its life stretch mm. or a dog wake up and stretch. They do it every time they wake up. They do it every single time. It's a pattern. It's a habit. So you can, you can start opening up these fascias with these long-term stretches in conjunction with chiropractic and then get that flow back. So now your gut's getting... 100% electrical flow, and you've cleaned it up, and you started recolonizing because you put in, you know, uh, you started eating uh, living foods, and you got out in the soil. Um, your dog's bringing actually bacteria into it, which is good. You, you're eating like um, uh, fermented foods, like kimchi and sauerkrauts, and we actually teach people how to make yogurts over here, specialized yogurts that replace missing bacteria mm-hmm. that have been missing from the human gastrointestinal tract since the 60s. I, I mentioned a few of those earlier, and, and keepers. There's all kinds of things you can do. And boom, people's health come back. And it's amazing how much energy you can have by just taking all the chemicals out of your body and just, you know, having plenty of clean uh, filtered water and also um, just natural food that is not processed. Um, You know, if we can just not buy things with numbers and colours and all this artificial stuff in, that is the first step you can make to make a, a true change, isn't it? Yeah. And you brought up a really important point, which is these chemicals. People don't really understand because I didn't. Um, it was in 2000, uh, it was about nine, 10 years ago. I looked up, and guys, when you're done listening to this podcast, check this out. Go to your browser and search these three words umbilical cord chemical, umbilical cord chemical. And you'll see what I saw 10 years ago. Every single child being born, these studies go back to 2005 that I saw. Every single child being born, they look at the umbilical cord blood of these young children and young mothers, supposedly the healthiest of all of us, right? Would make sense. And guess what they're finding? They look for 400 toxic chemicals, and they find as 71%, 250. And 180 of those cause cancer in humans 
and 212 cause developmental and brain disorders. These are already in our children. This is why cancer is the number one killer of our kids now um, from, from one to five. Um, it's number two from five to 16, or excuse me, from, uh, yeah, I think it's from five to 16 because accidents, accidents is still number one. But it's like brain cancer and then like leukemias and stuff like that. And so, you know, at the turn of the century, two to three percent of people are getting cancer now, a third and growing. And by the years 2040, 2050, if we stay on current trends, 68 to 72 percent of people have cancer. It will be as common as catching a cold. So if you've ever had a cold, statistically, you'll probably have cancer in your lifetime unless you start learning that you're that you're nature. And these chemicals have got to get out. You've got to get them out. You can't see them. That's the problem. And you can't see them. They're microscopic. They're coming in from the air you breathe. People don't realize that you take 400 gallons of air in through your lungs and out every hour. That's a lot. Mm. 400 gallons of air. What's in that air? If you have carpet, nylon fibers, carpet, synthetic carpet, it's off-gassing formaldehydes. You're slowly embalming yourself and your family. But nobody... Nobody in their right mind would ever buy that stuff or ever even move into a home or, or be around it if they knew that up front. But everybody's doing it. Mm-hmm. And carpet's cheap. And not to mention all the other nasty crap, cats pee in it, it's weird stuff, and bugs and stuff. And, but then you go to things like laminate floors. Well, you know, there's studies at MIT that were showing that the, the off-gassing from laminates is directly linked to some of the autism in children. These little babies are crawling around on the floor. It's, it, it's a contributing factor. So it's like, this is where we got to get back to natural, natural stuff, like things from nature. It's that simple. So you have to get the awareness around this stuff first. Like they, they told me like sodium lauryl sulfate, it's a known suffocant. It's used in a lot of shampoos as an example and soaps because people like sudsy things. It causes cancer. Um, or if your toothpaste says harmful is swallowed, please contact the poison control center. <laughs> Aren't you poisoning yourself a little bit every time you brush your teeth? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But everybody else is doing it. It's in the supermarkets. You can go buy that stuff. And it's like, like I don't, I want white tea. So I put this stuff in my body and I'm slowly giving myself cancer. And you know, it's everywhere. It's even in potato chips. Like if the potato chips say expeller pressed, that means heated. Mm. And when you heat oils, those oils turn into a lipid peroxide, known carcinogens, fried foods, right? And it's, it's our whole society's doing it. It's just like, well, you know, grandma's fried chicken's great. Well, yeah, it is, but it creates lipid peroxides, and these cause cancer. And she's cooking in an aluminum, which leads to Alzheimer's, dementia, memory loss. Mm. And, oh, and by the way, Grandma does have Alzheimer's. So does Grandpa. My Grandpa died of Alzheimer's. Wow. So as an example, like, then I got home, I looked at my shampoo, first ingredient, sodium lauryl sulfate. I've been poisoning myself my whole life. I looked at my toothpaste, harmful if swallowed. Please contact the poison control center. And so I started making decisions, and I realized that my buying dollars drive industry so we can still vote with our dollars. Whether you believe in these election systems or not, it doesn't matter. You, your vote still counts when, when you purchase something. You know, if you want to have a, you know, like a, a phone that, you know, that's made in, in China, as an example, they actually have these places where, um, or a computer, where they have what are called suicide nets. Because some of these companies, like, I won't name the company, I don't want to get sued or something, but the people, their slave wages, they, they hate their life and their, their job so much, they're jumping out of the windows mm. to make your phone and you make your laptop and your iPad. Mm. And they put suicide nets to catch them and they put them back to work. Like, just so we can save a few bucks. So we our, our, our dollars drive these industries. So we really have to be conscious about what we're purchasing. We can change everything very quickly. If you stop buying like a laundry detergent that's a chemical that's poisoning you and your family. You're breathing that stuff in. It's off-gassing into your body. And then you, where does the water go? Mm. It goes into the ecosystem. And then you're poisoning everybody and yourself again and all the animals and everything. And then there's microfibers coming off of your synthetic clothing. Women, your polyester, your uh, lycra bras are off-gassing 97% of the, of the estrogen-mimicking, hormone-mimicking chemicals from day one, even after a 1,000 washes. And there, and and then, and then it's, it's leading to things like breast cancer, right? And ovarian cyst, uterine cyst. The breasts are a high hormonal area, so is the groin for men and, and and women. So we have to really look at this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, once I got it, I was kind of freaked out. But now I, I just take a, I just buy stuff that's natural. That's it. And I, and I and we really focus on the detoxification component. And you know, Tim, this is one of the reasons I actually started this show like four years ago was that. I wanted to wake people up to the ability to have those um, 
options to make those decisions on how they spend their money and actually through that we can make the change. So really it's up to us. It starts with us and and the choices that we make based on our values. So, you know, if if you do care about your health and what you put on your body and, and you know, your environment and where you live and all those kind of things, it comes down to the choices you make and yeah, it starts absolutely. with your dollar, you know. I'll give you another example that a lot of people are familiar with, aluminum cans. I don't drink out of aluminum anymore because that aluminum gets into your to your body, into mm. your brain. It leads to Alzheimer's and dementia and memory loss. Uh, we when we, we have we have a lot of people. I've dealt with a lot of dementia people. It's 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 skyrocketing, by the way. And just wait till you don't think about it until you got to take care of somebody in that situation. It is not fun. Mm. They can become angry and belligerent. Those the turn into three angry big three year olds. And they'll just take off. I mean, you'll find them three miles down the road. They don't even know where they're at, who they're at. They go through these. It's it's horrible. I've I've lived with two of them personally that I've helped take care of. It's rough. It's really rough. So I don't buy aluminum anymore. Mm. It's a non-negotiable with me. I don't drink out of them. People are like, oh, you want this? I'm like, nope. Even if it's some healthy drink, I'm like, I ain't doing it. I only drink out of glass. I have a glass mason jar. I drink out of that. And that's it. And I break about one a year on accident. You know, and that's it. So guess what? I'm not mining the earth. I'm not giving money to, to dig more aluminum out of the earth and, and you know scrape the earth. You know, the earth is a living organism, just like us. If you pan away from it, all of a sudden the, the rivers look like veins and capillaries. The clouds work like an iris, just like the iris in your eyes. Like if light comes in, the iris will adjust to let a certain amount of light in. The clouds are the ones things that are dictating heat and cold and keeping it at, at ambient temperatures for life. So it's like this is a living organism we're on. And literally our purchasing dollars are either ripping it apart or not. And we have to look at these things. So I don't buy aluminum. And guess what? I they There's less aluminum being sold because I'm not buying it. If everybody just said, I'm done with aluminum cans. Yeah. And they won't buy it. The industry will they'll change. They'll have to go to glass. They have no option because if nobody's buying their product anymore, they have to change or they go out of business. Mm. So that's how you really make an ethical change. And like you said, you change them yourself. You have to change yourself. So I've changed myself. And I'm, I'm just telling people, like, I don't want people to, like, follow me. And just, like, look at my example, though. And then do you. Like, do you. And do healthy things. And, but the stuff that I do is just so common sense now. It's, like, mm. it's not that complicated. We focus on three areas. Reducing stress. Getting the chemicals and the toxins, the heavy metals out of the body. Just, you know. And then number three, flooding the body with living nutrition. Mm. fresh food fresh food fresh food fresh food growing nutrient dense soil lots of sprouts sprouted nuts sprouted seeds sprouted grains sprouted beans and then bacterium cultured foods lots of cultured foods if you do those things you got red blood cells you got some eyes your heart beating you're probably going to your, your body's going to revamp itself just like i did yeah and you're going to feel 10 20 30 years younger and you're not going to start aging like other people like when I do jujitsu and I start doing that training, I'm rolling around with guys that are just beefcakes, 24 years old studs. And, you know, I'm, I'm starting to, you know, I'm brand new at it, but I've uh, tapped out a couple blue belts. You know, it's like <laughs> not ego or nothing, but like, cause it's, it's really a chess game. I love it. Mm. But, um, and then I tell them how old I am and they're like, what? Like you're, you're 50. Wow, dude, you're as old as my dad. You don't move like you're 50. Mm. And it's because I've learned these basics. I, I reduce my stress. I get the chemicals out. I flood my body with living nutrition and I stretch my body daily. I do that in yoga a lot. And, um, I move my body. I keep moving and it's everybody else can do this. And we, you know, you don't get to this point. I've been doing this stuff for 12 years and it just keeps getting better. And it's like, what else can I find this? And I find something else. I'm like, I can't believe I'm sleeping even better. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I could sleep better. And then how many people are dealing with sleep issues? And I, and like, I can't think I can recover better. And I find something else. And I, I've been doing this for 12 years. And now it's like my, I've literally turned it into a business. Like all I do is try to get as healthy as I possibly can. And, and then I share it with other people. It's literally, it's ridiculous that I, I even, I even exist. <laughs> I shouldn't have a business. Everybody should just be feeling like me. And maybe we should be like playing guitar right now or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not levitating right there, Tim. Like seriously. <laughs> but, but, you know, as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of people and this episode I know will be a wake up call for someone. Uh, and that's the intent of it. But, you know, for people our age, and you and I are virtually the same age, um, is 
most of them wake up every, every morning and are taking a handful of pills, and I'm not talking supplements. They're taking yeah. prescription drugs or something else um, just to get through their day. I don't know about you, but I don't take anything. Um, and at this age, I'm, I'm very proud to say that. Um, so yeah. there's a lot of people our age out there that are, are just going through the motions of, of living on prescription drugs when they could actually like break free of all of that, couldn't they? Well, yeah, it's up to them. Again, darkness and light are both there. There's a lot of contrast there, and you get to choose um, however you want to go down. And I, I let people fully do whatever they want. I'm just here for the people that want to change. But we've seen lots of people um, do it. But if you look at pharmaceutical drugs as an example, um, one, one easy example is like people take aspirin, okay? I've got pain. Give me an aspirin. Bear, been around a long time. Where does aspirin come from? It comes from white willow bark. So why wouldn't you just take white willow bark? And it comes with its full spectrum, all its bioflavonoids and cofactors, and it's completely balanced in nature. Um, why not do that? Because there's no education around it. It's like I, they, they teach you not to think. What I'm trying to teach people is start thinking. Start thinking and then follow, use your heart to think. You follow, you know, lead by your heart. Another one is like, what's another one? It would be an easy example that a lot of people. Uh, how about um, uh, statin drugs? Tons of people taking statin drugs, right, for cholesterol. Well, where does statin drugs come from? Red yeast rice. So why wouldn't somebody take that? Now, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you what to do. But why wouldn't you even why, – why, how come we're not being taught this, right? Why are we not being taught this stuff? All these drugs and stuff, everything, even the synthetic chemicals that are on this planet, they all came originally from nature. Mm. They had to find something, and then they synthesize it in a lab. So the cool thing is, is nature will eventually break that shit back down and break it back down to its elemental state. A lot of your synthetic clothing you're wearing is, and, and drugs actually come from crude oil, which is mostly algae, right? But they make it a synthetic, and then it becomes something that's toxic to the body because it's not its natural form, right? So the body's pretty intelligent, but year after year, like, you know, Lou's a perfect example. He's a retired military vet, Air Force. Uh, he was in our um, Rotary Club in his 70s, and I just asked him a question. I'm like, you take any medications? He's like, yeah, I, I've been on a high blood pressure medication. How long? Um, well, God, geez, I guess about 15 years now. It's like, wow, 15 years. I'm like, are you ever planning on getting off of that? And then all of a sudden you saw him have this aha moment. He's like, God, you know, when I went to the doctor, I thought this was just going to be a stopgap. It's been 15 years I've been on this stuff. I got so busy in my life. And he goes, you know, I've, I've had to be on a lot of different these high blood pressure medications because one made me sleepy at work. I was falling asleep. Another one I couldn't see at night, gave me like night blindness. Another one made me itch, you know, and sometimes you take this one and it gives you this side effect. So you got to take another drug for that effect that gives you another one. And there's less of side effects, including death are on these things. It's like crazy. Like your body's natural. It's like you might need some of these things for a quick stop gap in an emergency situation. But for the most part, they all come from nature. So why don't we just go to the natural source, realize that we are nature. And the reason why we're so not happy is because we're disconnected from source we're disconnected from this planet. And people have to realize, like, look, your body's mostly made of, like, water, right? Where do you find it? It's in nature, rivers, creek, uh, lakes, streams, creeks. Your body has bacteria in the gut. Those bacteria in the gut are the same ones that are in the soil, guys. Same microorganisms. You are Mother Earth. How about your bones? What are your bones made of? Minerals. Where do you find that? Same ones in the dirt again. So you literally are Earth. Literally. And when you die, you're supposed to go back into the Earth and the cycle of life can, you know, it just recycles you, right? So think about this. The Earth is part of the solar system. The solar system is part of the galaxies, and the galaxies are part of the universe, and now the multiverse and beyond. So literally, you have the power of the universe inside of you, and your immune system there is part of it. Trillions and trillions of cells. You have six trillion human cells that we've counted so far, 60 trillion bacterial cells, 360 trillion virus cells. You're more virus and bacteria than you. So think about this. Think about this magic tapestry that's going on inside you. These 10 like billion new cells every second are being made in your body. It's unbelievable what's going on inside of you. You have the power of the universe inside of you to not only heal, but to do what you love and create whatever you want in this life. We just have to, you have to understand that at a core deep level, all we are is unconditional love. That's all you are. 
that person that's listening to my voice right now, all you are is unconditional love, nothing else. If you're not feeling right now that, it's because there's clouds in the way. So unconditional love is like the sun. It's always shining. It's always there, right? But sometimes you can't see it. It just rained here the last couple of days. It's been hot. Now the sun's gone. You can't see it. It's still there, but it's behind the clouds. Those clouds are societal conditioning and your parental conditioning and these bullshit belief systems that you've been taught. As soon as you can learn to start brushing these clouds away and you start getting some results in your life, you're going to see that you are a conditional love and anything in your life is capable. You are capable of pretty much anything and you're capable of things you can't even imagine. And when you start following your excitement and your joy to your best ability every day with no insistence on an outcome, man, the synchronicities in your life are going to just, your life is going to explode in many different directions. And it's going to be a wonderful thing. And we need everybody doing this. The more we do this, the faster we do it, the more people that are tapping into consciousness, the faster this, you know, like what your, your goal and my goal just is a little bit different. You know, mine's like change yourself, change, change yourself, change your world because it is your world. Yours is ethical change. It's about change. What you put out is what you get back. So no matter who you are, what you're doing, if you want different things in your life, you have to change. That's what it boils down to. So, Look, the common thread between us, Tim, is that, you know, it all begins with us. And uh, that's the, the thing that I've learned over speaking to so many people around the world is that if we want change, it begins with us. So, you know... <laughs> One of the things that's mind-blowing for me is that, you know, each one of us, we have a body and we know the least about it, you know, like just what you've been talking about, it's all about awareness. Um, And, you know, we could, I reckon you and I could sit down all day and unpack everything uh, that that you cover, but, um, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. But uh, Tim, for those people who are as excited as I am about what you do, where can they go to find out more and get in touch with you? Absolutely. Uh, our website is chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. Uh, I have a show called The Health Hero Show. So if you guys want some free information, you want to get to know me a little bit better because, you know, I could be first time you ever heard of me. You don't even know who I am. I like to build trust with people first. So we have a, I give away about 80% of what we do for free. We charge for 20% of it. That's how we keep the lights on. We keep growing our company. But um, the podcast is great. You can pick a topic and start learning there with me. And then for those of you that after that, or if you want to jump right in and get some of our doctor formulated real food products with no chemicals and no toxic binders, fillers, and flow agents, all of our stuff is like literally hand harvested, um, sun dried or air dried under 110 degrees to keep the enzymes active, that life force active. For those of you intuitives and Reiki type people, you're going to be blown away. You're going to, when you drink our, like our green product, you're going to instantly feel the energy transfer instantly. So that for those people that are intuitives, they'll know what I'm talking about. But for the rest of you, that's good stuff. And um, if you want to get some of our products, I would tell you what, I'll show you how to get a discount. So go to it's chemicalfreebody.com, click the shop tab, and then do the, I think it's bundle specials. Those are already discounted. We have like a little jumpstart bundle. If you want to stick your toes in the water or all the way up the ladder to the total energy and detox bundle, um, I would also suggest checking out our tinctures. They are some of the most powerful things that we've put together. Unbelievable. Like the turmeric is 185 fold, 185 times more anti-inflammatory than regular turmeric products. And we don't need black pepper because of the delivery system. It goes transdermal right into the cell. And it's it's so small it can go through the blood brain barrier. But I also have Tim's favorites. These are the things I've curated like special saunas, air purifiers, water devices, um, and stuff like that are molecular hydrogen machine that we, we promote and there'll be a lot more new stuff coming out over the next few months but um that's it and all of our stuff our, our products not the the other stuff that we sell for these other companies like the water and the air systems but the, just the the chemical free body detox and nutrition products we offer a double your money back guarantee and all of that stuff because i don't want there to i want everybody to try our stuff because i know it'll work for 98 percent of you up the middle it's all based on you know ten thousand years of biological engineering system science from the ayurvedic technology um, so we've got really cool stuff. It's all doctor formulated. It's good. And we just want you to come on over and so we can love on you. We offer coaching. I lead a, a weekly coaching, uh, session every Wednesday. I'll be teaching tonight. Um, so my coaches join me and, um, so we have that available and then we also have private one-on-one coaching for those that want to have somebody hold their hand through the process that just wants to get, get it done now and completely transform themselves in about six months. Incredible stuff. Now, I've got the last big question for you, Tim. What's the change you'd like to see in the world and how can we bring it to life? 
Okay, so I, I want I want to see I, you know I want to see people tapping into their consciousness. You know, I looked at this like saying raise consciousness, but I really I, I don't think consciousness is something you can raise. It just is. It is that sun shining. It is that unconditional love. It's about tapping into it. It's always there, just like the sun. So that's what I'm all about. I want to because I I went through this process and it's still unfolding for me. Doors are still opening, things that I didn't see before I'm seeing now. Um, I'm getting more in tune with my body, my spiritual practice. And and um, it's like a ripple effect, literally, because when you when you do this for yourself, like you're literally handing out permission slips for other people. They're going to see the change in you. Mm. And you say, uh, you know, that's why I tell people, like, if you have a family member, and you're like, I'm changing my health, I'm going to help you. Everybody's like, yeah, whatever. You keep saying it again. And they'll, they'll start picking on you. You got to stay steady and true month after month, year after year, some are going to come around, some won't, and that's okay. When people are negative towards you, when you respond differently to them, now you know your world's changed. It's not what's going on around you, it's what's going on inside of you that matters. So that's it. I want people to tap into their consciousness, and I know that by helping you clean up your body and giving you the tools to do so, I can literally raise your vibrational frequency on a cellular level that's going to help you tap into that consciousness. So that's what we're all about. Yeah, it's that ripple effect and uh, you're like a walking advertisement, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That, we all we all are. That's it. Mm. Mama Bear teaches Baby Bear what to do. Mm. And that's what we should all be doing with our, our children, our friends, and our family. We should be a walking, talking example. Not just saying something, but your words need to match your deeds. Agreed, agreed. Tim, I can't thank you enough for being a part of the Ethical Evolution. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to the Ethical Evolution Podcast. If you're ready to be the change and would love to work with me on finding your voice through spiritual coaching or creating your own podcast with impact, visit ethicalchangeagency.com. So we love the curse of the lake house. We, we love, love the, the curse. Welcome to the curse of the lake house. I am not a witch. Really well written. Keeps you guessing. I really like the ending. Peter, otters mate for life too. Otters find the otter they belong with and they mate for life too. The curse of the lake house. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Electric acid. Welcome to the Reverie Channel, where entertainment knows no bounds. Live concerts, on-demand music, documentaries, and short films, all in stunning HD. Now on Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire, immerse yourself from home. And on Android and iOS for those on the move. Support creators with crowdfunding donations. Fuel their creativity. Join us in shaping entertainment's future. The Reverie Channel, where every view, every donation matters. Electric acid.